Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to talk about all sorts of wonderful things. I got Gary Gillette in the wings, and he's here to talk about Missoula City Band. Um, I got some news. I got some weather. I got the first installment of the uh, Kids Summer Series of videos that I'll be showing based on pretty much all the stuff we've shown. Um, let's see what else. I have a uh, couple videos, a couple things here and there, just double checking some things here. But I also will have Gary Gillette on as well. So let's talk a little bit about the weather. I don't have a little weather slate for you right now, but I'm just going to tell you what the weather is. It is currently 54 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 83, so things are going to start warming up throughout the weekend in the high 80s. Um, throughout mo by Monday, it's going to be 88, so you can expect temperatures be in that area. Next week, I heard it's going to be up into the 90s, so you may want to look for that, but it may change. So uh, it's going to be mostly sunny, mostly clear. Um, you may have that 20% chance of thunderstorms happening Saturday night, but I won't fret too much. It might just pass through really quickly, um, but your, your whole weekend is looking just wonderful. Um, here are some of the things that are happening in the news. So let's talk about some news, news, news. So in Billings, um, the state health department issued a temporary emergency rules for the national for the uh, state medical marijuana program just days before an implication deadline. On Friday, parts of Montana's new medical marijuana program will take effect as state regulators move towards full implementation, which is slated for next year. As passed by voter by ballot initiative and refined by legislators during the most recent session, the new program promises. Uh, uh, closer product tracking, a self-sustaining tax system, and more robust licensing program. Um, for for so th those of you who actually need mer medical marijuana, so if you have like glaucoma or lupus or can partake in such things. Um, of course, I've never seen a cannabis smoker get so uppity until you challenge their reasoning behind the use of medical marijuana. So uh, um, another big item that's happening locally in the city of Missoula is that um, the Missoula Water Company is now uh, basically having um, a new uh, um, slogan in a way. It's called um, uh, Missoula City of Water. I had a picture of, you, of, of it for you guys, but I'll, I'll show it a little bit later in the show. But I'm going to jump right over to uh, a state uh, news item that I thought was pretty interesting. There's a uh, a famed 25-year-old Yellowstone grizzly bear was shot three times at close range with a 30 caliber rifle by an elk hunter in the I in late 2015, according to documents uh, recently uh, released by the FOIA request. The bear was known as Scarface and is familiar with the watchers and FWP alike. Of course, shooting a grizzly bear is a federal offense punishable by up to a $50,000 fine and a year in jail. The case was closed in July 2016, but details of the incident were never released, including the name of the elk hunter. The man who shot the bear was not charged, and whether or not the bear was shot in self-defense was unclear. Uh, the original story was that the hunter came upon a bear at night. Um, he shot from the hip three times, but when investigators found the bear, it was somewhere different than what the man sa said it was. He said that the bear fell dead where he shot it, but the ba bear was found later um, dead by a creek. So uh, when it comes to FWP, killing a bear in self-defense sh should be the last resort because there are so many non-lethal ways to handle um, a situation. Um, the full story with details is on the BillingsGazette.com, um, thanks to uh, Brent French for the article. In national news, um, Mona Lisa Perez was arrested on Monday night after she fatally shot her 22-year-old boyfriend, Pedro Ruiz, while the couple were recording a YouTube stunt for her vlog. According to the criminal... Um, complaint provided by the BuzzFeed news system. On Wednesday, Perez was charged with a second-degree manslaughter, a felony that carries a maximum sentence of 10 years and a fine of $20,000 or both. So, and the, so the short of it was that uh, Mona Lisa convinced her boyfriend to hold a book. Um, actually, wait, wait, it was a, uh, uh, like, um, from the, what the video uh, basically said is that a, uh, they were going to stop a bullet with a book and, um, According to Mona Lisa um, Perez, um, her boyfriend convinced her that it's possible for her to shoot a bullet at a gun without it piercing through the book. But unfortunately, th um, the book that they used before worked, but the book that they actually used for the view didn't work, which basically shot him in the chest and he uh, pretty much died soon after um, officials came onto the scene. So. It's it's very interesting how uh, some people would do anything for a like or a view. 
So this was a BuzzFeed article, and I'm assuming you probably read it somewhere online and whatnot. So that's kind of like wh what wraps up all the news items that are happening. I have a couple uh, PSAs for you guys, but when we come back, we'll have Gary Gillette on our show. For too long, corporate tobacco has exploited our people, manipulated our practices, and profited from our addiction. No more. If you struggle with commercial tobacco addiction, call the American Indian Commercial Tobacco Quit Line today at 1-855-372-0037 and talk to someone who understands. Nature Nathan here, on my own in the Montana wild. I'm used to having my best mate Liam behind the camera, but he said he was rather tired of getting chased by bears. The show must go on. Set up quite nice, really. Duff from a lovely fish dinner. And I've got my bear spray. Oh well. Right ahead, he's out right there, so it's just us. Uh, and he's got a little week there, two bars from the end. We go three bars from the end, and no, it's just us, folks. And we won't be slowing down, just gonna try to keep sitting together. Two, last three is here. guys we're joined here with Gary Gillette and he's here to talk about all the fun that Missoula City Band gets to have every single week this summer okay it's it's a it's a party that happens every single week and uh, it's 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 so much fun to be able to uh, uh, go through the process of having rehearsals on Monday nights and then uh, putting together a concert for Wednesday uh, uh, sometimes even more than that. Or what, yeah, we've had, we've had a few date changes this year, but we're all online now for rehearsing on Mondays uh, and then playing concerts at Wednesday out of Bonner Park. Yep. And your upcoming concerts, I uh, actually have two concerts coming up next week. Yep, yep. Tuesday, you have the 4th of <coughs> July special that's happening at the Missoula County Fairgrounds, not at the mall this year because of all the that's construction. Right. And forever. The word is, oh, really? the word is because of the of, of the construction and the the new format of the mall, what it's going to end up looking like, they no longer have that big open field for uh, the presentation of the fireworks. So it sounds like if this goes well, that uh, 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 the mall will continue to uh, to uh, sponsor the event, but the uh, will be over at the fairgrounds, cool. and the audience will be sitting uh, where the where the rides are in that carnival area mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the band will be t packed up against the uh, Florida Culture Building and then they'll blow off all the fireworks over in the uh, grandstands but no one will be sitting there because the roof gets in the way of seeing the explosion so there'll be no ground show just great big uh, high-flying uh, fireworks and then we'll follow up with a concert the next day cool and then the next concert the next day is going to have a lot of the same music but more the, and more so we'll see how well rehearsal goes here on monday how much music we can uh, we can prepare we have a couple tunes uh, extra left over from our circus show and we've got some soloists in in town it's always so much fun yeah. uh, we had a soloist step up uh, scott plays in the band too we had a uh, i had a soloist bail last week and uh uh, I just asked somebody else to come do it. I just gave. Did you see me hand? A, I handed this tenor sax player the music as he came to the as he came up, put it on a stand. I said, "There it is, kid. Have at it." He's a he was a pro out of Seattle. God, that was fun. Allie Beatty's in town, so I think I'm going to pull out clarinet polka nice. before she runs off and does her doctorate in clarinet performance <laughs> at Ohio State. And I think Jay, 
I've just been uh, editing a piece. I think we're going to do I Can't Get No Satisfaction. We'll do a Stones tune uh, sometime here this week as well. Excellent. <laughs> so that's what you guys can expect this whole summer season. And um, also, what other concerts? You guys are going to go to Glacier this year, right? No, no. Glacier, the, that band director of the Flathead Band is uh, um, uh, off in Europe for another year. So we're going to do an exchange with Glacier next year. But we got, uh, let's see. Uh, next week, the week after is... Uh, uh, a combined concert with uh, a Sweet Adelines. Nice. And then we do a we do a number of I think we're doing four numbers with the Missoula Community Chorus. Uh, they'll be our guests at one of them. We're doing uh, our favorite son Gary Herbert will be here, uh, and he's bringing friends with him. Nice. Uh, 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 we're doing a celebration uh, of the Thomas Marr. It's going on in Helena right oh. now with the 150th anniversary of his death. I, I, we, the, the Thomas Marr Bar here in town is paying for the Shamrockers to come down and we'll do a concert with them. Cool. Caitlin Sisler and Jesse Docknall, Missoula's <laughs> cutest couple. If you don't believe they're the Missoula's cutest couple, you just have to come and see. She's a singer and he's a saxophone player. <laughs> <laughs> so something, something a little different every week to keep it fresh. Nice. And this is going to go on every, pretty much every single Wednesday until August. Yeah, through August, I think we played three. I think we played three. I added, I added a date because it, the weather is always so good in August, and I don't have to go back to school. So well, let's do another week. Yeah. What the heck? Well, that sounds like a nice little treat for sure for people who like to go to these concerts. Most of the concerts are going to be at Bonner Park. All, uh, all, pretty much all everything except the Fourth of July. Yeah. Every Wednesday night, eight p.m. <clears throat> yep. Show up early to get a good spot. Yeah, yep. um, Rehearsals are Monday night at 7. Yeah. If you're interested in breaking out that horn or instrument. I, I, I think we're going to have a guest from Turkey this week. He came up really? to me. Yeah, a clarinet player. I dared him. I just love having uh, four nationals there playing American patriotic music. I yeah. hope he shows up. This year, it seems like you have a good <laughs> amount of uh, uh, imports because you said a couple people from California, there are. East Coast, West Coast, all over. Just people that come here in summer or vacation or have friends in town and every week there's somebody else there's five or six people that have no idea who they are or where they're from <laughs> and then you never see them again no no and it's that one time shot it's that's so much fun it it, it, uh, it keeps things really lively in the in the band it's fun yep and mcat also films all your concerts god bless ron Shaw. Yep. every single one man yep. right over there where that old tree got blown down ron sets himself up and then he posts things before he even goes to bed. Yep. That I woke up on Thursday <laughs> and saw one of those clips uh, uh, on yep. Facebook. Yeah, we're. Uh, I've been showing Ron a couple things about social media here and there. Oh, okay. We're just like, you should do it. It'd be great. And he's been like, just going like crazy with the social I, media. Some some people really uh, get into that. You know, I I I don't I don't do that myself. <laughs> but Amanda Tish, who runs the band, uh, she does that stuff, and it's it's great. It, cool. it it connects up to people in a way that they are used to communicating. Yep. And also, be sure to like Missoula Community uh, yeah. Missoula City Band That's on right. Facebook. Please, and then uh, you can find out uh, where and where we'll, we'll be at, who's coming up, what the, what kind of songs we'll be playing, who the guest soloists are, yeah. tidbits. All right. So once again, um, just tell people when and where we all are. This happens. We are every Wednesday night at Bonner Park uh, at eight o'clock. That's where we're at. You can count on that one. And if you want to play, just like us on Facebook and come and play with us. I dare you. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Thank you, This Scott. is Gary Gillette. He is the director of the Missoula City Band. and That's my job yeah, anymore. Yeah, that's his job now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Thank you, Scott. Kind of interesting. There are a lot of different agencies involved, and I won't bore you by telling you how it all breaks down, but it's kind of a really complicated flow chart um, with the Department of Justice, the Department of Homeland Security, and the Department of State all playing a role in, in our immigration system. And so when people are outside of the country trying to get admission into the country, that, that the consulates abroad are controlled by the Department of State. And so the Department of State controls every consulate outside of the country where um, they interview people for student visas or visitors visas and all those types of things. So. There is not one person directly responsible for making sure these three videos are situated next to this. Someone is responsible, or more likely a team of people, are responsible for coding the algorithm that makes all of this appear. So, and I think that sometimes 
that's something that people do not understand is how hands-off our algorithms are at this point. Um, and even to the extent of another Zainab Tufeki um, issue is machine-based learning. We now know how to code algorithms that know how to learn. Is when we are, I was looking at whether the mice were actually seroconverting or not, when we did ELISAs where you use a secondary antibody to bind the primary antibody coming from the mouse. So we use an anti-mouse antibody on the market and it didn't work. And when you looked at the results, it looked like the mice were actually not seroconverting until we used a very specific anti secondary antibody against the, uh, the anti, it was the anti because then we were able to now show that uh, they do indeed seroconvert. So that took like maybe six months or so to, uh, to achieve. And, uh, Another challenge with the peromyscus is that they breed slowly, especially if it's winter. For some reason, no matter how we try to change the environment to feel like uh, it's a natural environment. And, uh, but I think for some reason, they have a biological clock to know that. Hey guys, welcome back um, to Wake Up Missoula. I want to thank one, thanks once again to Gary Gillette for joining me this morning. Um, if you guys want to be part of the Missoula City Band, rehearsals are every Monday night at Sentinel High School at 7 p.m performances 8 p.m. every Wednesday well into August. So pretty much every single week there'll be a performance. Next week I look forward to being part of the Missoula City Band. We'll, we'll be playing uh, Monday rehearsal, Tuesday, 4th of July, and then of course July 5th, uh, the Wednesday regular scheduled concert. So you guys look forward to that. I look forward to that. It's going to be great. Now let's talk about things that I don't like talking about and that's movies. Here is Pre-Critic. So if you guys don't know what Pre-Critic is, it's basically me just bashing movies before I have any reason to bash them. Anyways, uh, well, they did it again, and then again, and then the spinoff, and then this movie now came out. And we're in a tale of two cities type of Trump with the animated world of minions and terrible fake accents from Steve Carell, DreamWorks, Despicable Me 3, or uh, from what they put in there, Despicable Me 3? three basically they put the e with the three anyways um but it's a star of roster of actors whose voice characters and and things happen and and, and basically in this case follows the story of brothers separated by forces um that m are a plot device in this movie and um you can control and you can't control what the movie does uh it's, it's basically it's garbage the whole idea of this movie is basically you get 30 minutes of story with 30 minutes of minions doing all sorts of crap, ruining your child's basic human language. It's basically, they say, banana and beetle, blah, 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 and that's basically how they talk. And your kids are basically learning, losing vocabulary because of the minions. Uh, <laughs> so please don't take your kids to this movie. Um, spend time with them. Get, take them on a picnic and uh, let them use their imaginations <laughs> rather than uh, get the garbage of a runtime of an hour and 30 minutes. Moving on to the next thing, you get the house. Speaking of garbage, mm, Will Ferrell is still a thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but after seeing the other guys, that basically was the peak of Will Ferrell's career, and that was kind of painful to watch even though. so, But Amy Poehler is great. I love Amy Poehler in a lot of movies, but I have never really liked her in live action movies where you just see Amy Poehler in movies and it's just like, huh. I don't know why, but I just don't like Amy Poehler in movies. You know, you watch it and you're just like, you're just thinking to yourself, it's like, why don't, why isn't she as funny as she is in Parks and Recreation? And then I realized it's like, it's, she cannot really hold a movie kind of on her own, even with, it's kind of like, it feels like this movie's like a elongated Saturday Night Live skit um, where you get to watch this movie and stuff happens. I've never really enjoyed a movie which is basically uh, her character as a central character or Will Ferrell kind of. I don't know. It, it, it's, 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 it's like this what I've noticed. So the whole idea of this movie is that they have a house and they're trying to pay for their daughter's college because it's getting too expensive. We can all relate to that. Um, but so they start a, uh, their underground gambling ring inside their house, which is why the movie is called The House. That's basically it. And things happen. They almost get away with something and bad. I don't know. Everything kind of gets off the rails, which is basically what this movie is going to be about. So save, save your money. <laughs> Here's another movie um, from Edgar Wright, the guy who made all those British movies you've probably never heard of unless you're one of those weird people who likes Doctor Who, Sherlock, and basically loves BBC television, um, Downtown Abbey, all that stuff. People, like, there's a group, there's always a market for people who, like, love British stuff. I'm not one of those people. I enjoy movies he, to in a certain point. Um, Edgar Wright is a very stylistic type of director, and 
basically in this movie is a very um, weak plot devices throughout this movie. Um, it's it's a heist film. Like you can't really have a really fun um, heist film. It's just like they steal money, things go wrong, plot moves forward, people die, people succeed, things happen. I don't know. It's it's just it's just like it's been done, and you've seen movies like this before, and. Yeah, I mean, it's just the way it is. But, of course, if you're interested in seeing any of these movies, um, that's your pariah. <laughs> so that basically concludes Pre-Critic. And I'm going to show you guys a movie that you are going to watch rather than um, what you have to watch. So without further ado, here is um, Summer Series, The Room. <laughs> stuff our friend has been missing for at least four days now and I've been trying to find her we're not really qualified to be search to be searching for her well I know she's here because I tracked her phone to this location so she's got to be here listen I don't care what you guys do but I won't rest until I find her an abandoned building. Looking for our friend? <sighs> but it's abandoned. Why would she be here? Who knows? In here. Well, at least the signal's popped out here. Oh, this isn't oh. creepy. creepy at all. Take a look at the door, okay? It's, it's locked. How are we gonna get out of here? This is bad. This is really bad. I can't be in here. You don't understand. I got Tasha! What happened? Let's get out of here! Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for some city council stuff going on. Um, the city is working on a deal that wouldn't go against the best interests of some of the cemetery businesses in Missoula so um, that they have no issues with uh, the city of Missoula selling 
and um, basically underselling the competition and not being a direct competitor to a lot of the uh, um, local um, funeral homes and crematories. So um, the whole idea is that they're trying to have a set um, pricing for uh, monuments at a price that would wouldn't compete with local businesses, and of course it started with the Missoula Chamber of Com Commerce sending a cease and desist letter. Um, the Garden City Funeral Home um, had a lawyer, Rachel Franken, uh, represent uh, them in this uh, as they have all these committee meetings. And here is another committee meeting. So the city is updating the amendment to this and update some of the wording that reflects the best interests of the city and cemetery businesses um, throughout the city of Missoula. This a public hearing hasn't been set yet. They're working out a lot of the details, so they're uh, trying to get information from both sides. Um, so cemetery board chair Kim uh, Seberger talks about how um, situations like this have been um, dealt with in the past. We see the ongoing struggles with the monument companies to meet the cemetery rules and regulations when both selling and placing the monuments. The board minutes, no though, also clearly demonstrate a good faith effort by the board to work with local monument companies and funeral homes. For example, the original ordinance required a six-inch mow strip on all sides, and the board entered into a four-inch agreement um, by the monument companies. And after much discussion reflected in board minutes, board enters into a five-inch um, for the top and bottom and six inch on each, on each end. And in 2009, Cherry Frazier, who was the past chair for 18 years, and Mary Lou Cordes, who has been a member for over 40 years, um, were done making allowances due to continued non-compliance of the cemetery rules. They made it a point to educate new members on the reasons and history um, behind the decisions. Um, this board has been accused of not allowing comment by the public um, from the monument companies and funeral homes, and this is not true. Um, the board meetings are open for public comment. We have accepted their comments. Our response, however, was through the proper legal channel due to the presence of their attorney at our board meetings. There have been numerous times that these companies have requested to be on our agenda but did not show for comment. All right, so that was some of the... Uh um, issues that um, the folks on the cemetery board were working with in terms of uh, communication with uh, the folks in um, funeral businesses and whatnot. But up next, we got uh, Rick Evans. He's from Garden City Funeral Home, and he talks about some of the uh, um, issues that uh, he has with um, what uh, the city has reflected in terms of how much money that he's made with uh, monument sales and other stuff, and this is what he had to say my whole firm so I wish it was true but it's not it's well, we did not do hundred eight thousand dollars worth of, or hundred thousand dollars worth of sales at Missoula Cemetery that was my total one hundred and some thousand dollars was my total sales is, is long and also <laughs> with my liners in my vaults so that's what I did last year in total sales I don't have time to bur I don't didn't have time to break them down but I will by the next meeting that I'll have the exact figures for you the only thing I hate to see, I hate to see the, the cemetery um, go backwards as far as their pricing goes. Um, all the cemeteries in, in Ravalli County, Missoula County, all of us are in the $800 to $900 range. Um, I sell liners for $995, Missoula Cemetery sells them for $800. Um, so does St. Mary's Cemetery, it's going to hurt them. Um, Veterans Cemetery, same thing. Uh, I just hate seeing a public, uh, a public uh, entity like Missoula Cemetery uh, set the precedence for all of us private enterprise trying to make ends meet. To make all right. So once again, that was uh, Rick Evans um, talking from Garden City Funeral Home. Bob Jordan from Garden City um, Monuments um, expresses his concerns uh, with uh, uh, some of the things that are happening here in Mis uh, with this uh, new updated amendment. Cemetery, no matter size, location, or distance around us here, uh, is vital to our company uh, and to the whole community. Uh, the some of the outside support and local support that we do is through schools and churches, uh, university, children's theater, uh, natural department of natural resources, hospice, uh, all kinds of foundations. Uh, we support a lot of that, and we can 
do that only by uh, having every cemetery a portion of it, you know, to where we do the monuments for them, to where we can make that a fundraiser. And the money that it brings into the city here, uh, we do considerable big projects, uh, a lot of small communities outside Missoula here. But the revenue that it brings into Missoula uh, through our company is, you know, uh, it's a big part uh, that, we're, that we're very proud to be able to do. All right, so... Uh um, moving on, we got another quote from um, um, Rachel Parkins, a lawyer from Garden City Funeral Home, and Karima Tori. Um, she talks frankly about this particular, uh, some of the issues. I heard a lot about problems with the monument companies, problems with setting, things like that. Um, I, and, and, you know, I think the Chamber has spoken to this a number of times as well. Um, these are professional organizations, and it's a professional board, and we all need to learn to work together and solve these issues. Um, and, and I don't think putting companies out of business is the way to do that. Uh, I think the way to do that is exactly what they've been doing, which is to require monument companies to come in and fix problems when they exist or uh, when they occur. Um, and then finally, uh, there was a, a slide up here that talked about the, the different cemeteries and the different um, benefits that each one had and the different um needs they all met and the different resources they all had. And again, I want to reiterate that the Missoula Cemetery uh, stands apart on that. It is a public cemetery, so it is um, subsidized and it is tax favored. And that's, that in particular is what gives it an unfair advantage in entering into um, the private marketplace and selling like that. So we're happy to answer any other questions. All right, so that was uh, Rachel Parkins um, explaining the kind of like, the, in detail, kind of like the issues that would come arise if uh, Missoula Cemetery decided to start selling monuments, liners, and start basically doing their own funeral business as well. And I'm going to leave it on that note. The committee meetings are going to continue on through the uh, Parks and Conservation because um, Missoula Cemetery is considered part of the Parks and Con um, Conservation Committee uh, meetings. So they're going to continue these meetings um, for the future. Um, and we'll kind of and they're try to figure out a, a solution that best fits everybody's needs. So uh, if you want more information about this particular meeting, you can go on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Watch the whole meeting for yourself. I only give you a snippet of what I uh, noticed from the meeting. There's a lot more quotes, a lot more comments, a lot of presentations from both the Missoula Cemetery Board and also you get some of the uh, folks from um, a couple of the funeral homes there voicing their concerns about what's happening in Missoula in terms of the update or the amendment for of this particular thing. So um, let's go on to this camera and uh, I just want to talk a, a couple of little things about MCAT news and whatnot. Um, if you are um, home today and if you are interested in watching um, a bunch of kids is uh, hard work in video this week a lot of the kids worked very hard this week on creating a bunch of short little videos um, that they'll be presenting today at 5 p.m. between 5 and 6 p.m. Um, we might stop short depending upon how long the show goes but uh, the show is going to be live and the kids are going to basically ask each other questions and kind of present all their videos that ha they have made this week for the MCAT summer wildlife film camp so and then next week we have a week off and then we have two weeks of stop animation camp so we'll be showing a couple of movies here and there um, you can also access any of those videos online by logging on to mcat.org via our video on demand page our uh, media uh, our media camp is already on channel 189 you click on 189 and you can scroll through and you can see mcat media camp in this area right here or you can search for anything and you can watch all sorts of past summer camp videos all you got to type in is camps summer camps what have you and you can um, come up with any of the past summer camps MCAT has done and they're on our video on demand page so um, it's a great resource for you guys to watch anytime from anywhere uh, as long as you have internet you can pretty much watch MCAT at any time which is great um, another great thing you can do is you can log on to wikimissoula.wixsite.com slash wikimissoula so nice to meet you write it out twice it's a great resource for you guys to watch past interviews um, fun videos and a good multimedia type of deal where you guys can watch all sorts of fun things um, that I have made through um, Wake Up Missoula and through MCAT as well. Um, basically, a lot of times everything I make is usually pr shown on my morning show in teases, little short things, just kind of get it through. Um, I have a new, I have an art clip for you guys, 
and it's from the Clay Studio, and it's the last time I'm going to be able to play this particular art clip. But when I return, I'll talk about everything you need to know about what's happening this weekend if you guys want to go out and about. So we'll be right back after this. Hey guys, welcome back. Here are some of your events that you guys can do over your weekend. Starting this morning at 11 a.m., Spectrum Discovery Center is doing an engineering demonstration for kids. This is 350 for anyone four and over. If you're under three, you get in free. Um, their new location is 812 Tool Avenue, so that's where it's going to be happening. It's at the Discovery Bench, colon, engineering. So Lake Como Beach Day and Getaway, they're doing a shuttle. So if you go to Montana Adventure Shuttle, they're doing a getaway for your family and friends to beautiful Lake Como, south of Hamilton, Montana. That's a place. Um, a scenic drive down to the Bitterroot Valley brings you in a group of uh, beach. There's a beach. There's swimming. There's all sorts of fun stuff to do there. They have boating. They have all. It's it's a, Lake Como is a beautiful place. Most people just don't know about it. Uh, they do a quick stop for ice cream and treats on the return. Um, day use uh, fee included. So if you want to do that. 12 p.m. Missoula, Montana Adventure Shuttle. They're going to go on there, then they're going to come back later that day, and it's just going to be an experience, just a nice little group get-together. Um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves at MCT, um, 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. are doing performances at the Missoula Children's Theater. They do summer camps as well. They're more like day camps, and then they basically learn to act, group activities, and then they perform their show by the end of the week. And this one is Noah and the Seven Doors, an original adaptation from the classic tale presented by Mozilla Children's Theater. Uh, Snow White finds herself in peril when her stepmother, the queen, is told by her magic mirror that the princess is the fairer, is fairer than she is. Aided by two henchmen and a band of evil bats, the queen plots to get rid of Snow White. Snow White escapes the, from the queen and from the black forest creatures with help from the witless the witless the woodsman um to find a horse and the seven to find a home seven dwarves when the queen learns that snow white's whereabouts she attempts to poison snow white so you know kind of how the no whole story goes that kind of thing so mct is going to be performing it with a bunch of cute kids um um submission deadline is today um, if you're interested in doing a traffic signal box, um, so we had i had an interview with uh kathy olson and uh i can't remember becca um uh, mccarran Got it. Um, so I did an interview with them not too long ago, and they have a submission for the uh, City of Missoula Public Art Committee. Um, they're looking for people who want to do those traffic signal boxes. So if you see downtown, the little boxes that basically are the um, the power outlet people go into so they can um, program the street traffic signal lights, that's what they're going to paint, and they're going to make it look beautiful, and they're looking for so people, artists, to submit to it. They're going to have about three or four about three this year um, so you must present an application to submittable and you can go online to ci.missoula.mt.us you can get, oh, go to missoulapublicart.org to uh, submit and find out how you can submit as well you must have some kind of example a design concept for them so if you can hash it out today 
you have until 5 p.m. to do it. Um, and if you want to do it, they, uh, uh, and also all models must be delivered to the office of the mayor, City Hall, 435 Ryman Street, Missoula, Montana. It's City Hall. You can't miss it. Um, Family Friendly Friday is going to be at the Top Hat kicking off your nightly music events. Uh, if Every Friday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., to Top Hat presents a Family Friendly Friday, which includes having your kids run around, be crazy, Well, you uh, yourselves can kick back and have a nice cold one. Uh, and they do that pretty much... Yep, it's a, it's a great environment, and they uh, expect a lot of noise, so you can make as much noise as you want at the Top Hat. Um, just be aware that you should not let your kids touch the instruments that are on stage when the uh, performance will be on later that night as well. Um, I believe there's a couple other things happening um, in terms of music. Um, Butter Boa Mouth is going to be at VFW. It's going to be Acoustic Jam. Uh, Volcanus is going to be at Monks. Uh, no Cover Dance Party is going to be at the VFW. Um, then you got Josh Farmer Band at the Top Hat Lounge later that night. So there's going to be all sorts of wonderful things. Maybe Josh Farmer will play for the kids for the Family Friendly Friday as well. Um, but that concludes everything that you need to know what's happening for your Friday night. Saturday, um, you know, there's uh, it, especially in the summer, Missoula has a lot of stuff early on Saturday morning. So they try to like limit some things on Friday night so, so people don't get too crazy on Friday night. They want people to wake up early, do some nice Saturday morning stuff like the Farmer's Market, People's Market, Clark Fork River Market, all sorts of wonderful things happening from 8 to 1 p.m. starting Saturday. Um, but they also have a 5K marathon um, at Silver Park starting at 8 a.m. This is a national 5K run walk event taking place on July 1st in over 300 cities. In, in the spirit of standing in solidarity for human rights, the event will bring the collective voices of our community together to support several different charities working to protect civil liberties. 100% of the net profits will go directly to nine nonprofit organizations that includes those that endorse civil rights, women's rights, immigration's rights, LGBTQ rights, and the fight against climate change. This will be do a dog friendly 5K with raffle prizes, and at the end, from the generous support of the local business community as well for donating money and helping people raise money with a nice 5k. A reunion celebrating a century old a century of rural education, Sunset School District 30, and this is kind of like an ongoing series of history where you actually go to different locations and you learn the history of the area. This place is going to be at Sunset School District 30 at noon tomorrow. Um, all uh, present and past students, staff, board members, descendants of alum, and community members are invited to celebrate, reminisce, and unite the shared special place, Sunset School. Bring a potluck dish to share in a disposable container. Bring a lawn chair and join us for a trip down memory lane and sponsored by Blackfoot. Um, there's Gary Ferguson, Land on Fire. is going to be at Fact and Fiction. No one will argue about the destructive potential of wildfire. We see it in the news all too often, but fire is a natural process that can be a powerful agent in healing and renewal, able to return nutrients to the soil and keep forest diseases and, and harmful insects in check. They have entered a new era in which wildfire is more potent force than ever before, and primarily player in changing landscape is the American West. Climate change, increasingly uh, severe periods of drought are causing wildfire seasons to burn longer and hotter, affecting more and more people and property. And this is Gary Ferguson. It can be a fact and fiction, and he's talking about his book, Land on Fire. Sorry, there's like a bug flying in my face. And um, here are some of your music events for your Saturday night. Um, Brian J. is going to be at Imagination Brewing Company. Acoustic Band, Jordan Flor Floridas, will be at Ten Spoon Winery. Um, Crazy Dog Band is going to be at Draft Forks Brewing Company. Latin Dance Night, Downtown Dance Collective. Absolutely with Chris Moon, DJ Music is going to be at The Badlander. And you got Karaoke at BFW, known as Karaoke by Kaleidoscope. And um, I am going to mention one thing on Saturday because it's going to be a really cool thing happening. It's the 4th of July powwow. It's going to be Arley Powwow Grounds starting at 11 a.m. It's the 119th Arley. Uh, that's, that's basically how I said it. Um, but it's a powwow. Um, the earliest evidence of an attempt to hold a 4th of July powwow was in 1891. In the 1980s, however, traditional Indian dances were illegal under Bureau of Indian Affairs rules, and the Indian police and Flathead Indian agent Peter Ronan used the threat of U.S. Army intervention to break up the dance. Bureau of Indian Affairs found it difficult to argue that it should be illegal to celebrate the 4th of July. 
Through, though a time for government attempts to suppress traditional dances forced the tribes to hold them secretly. Because of this uh, prosecution, persecution, they cannot at this time establish divinity when the 4th of July power was held. So um, the idea is that it happened in the 1890s. Um, they were doing a powwow for the 4th of July, and in a lot of ways, it's just like uh, they kind of started doing powwows basically on, for the um, Independence Day of the United States as basically saying, like, hey, if we celebrate a celebration on the 4th of July and kind of curve it towards more like uh, Independence type of day for celebrating our independence, maybe they can't persecute us for dancing uh, or celebrating the 4th of July because it would be also uh, basically it, it, it's a catch-22 in a lot of ways it's like the U.S. Army would be like you can't celebrate the 4th of, you can't sell you can't do a powwow it's like well we're doing a powwow to celebrate the 4th of July well you can't celebrate the 4th of July so basically that's happened <laughs> so basically that was kind of like why they were able to do it for so long and so this is going to be a nice little powwow um, it's going to be happening at 11 a.m. at Arley Powwow Grounds Check it out. Um, let's see. 11 a.m. They do a, man, a mass in the dance er area. 12:45. Drum roll call. 1 p.m. Grand entry. Contestants in all categories. Winners announced after e each category, and must be uh, regalia to receive prize money. And then they have at 10 p.m. They have home sweet home. So there's gonna be an all day event happening in Arley in the powwow grounds. And I think this is going to be a wonderful event. I love powwows. They're great fun. It's a great way to connect with uh, the people who originally owned the land that we so far take, uh, uh, take for granted as well. So I'm going to end a note on that. I don't want to get too much into anything on one end or the other. I have, let's see, let's see, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty solid. Everything that I needed to say, I said. Um, and then I can make up more things to say. Um, but I want to thank you guys for joining me. Once again, Gary Gillette, thanks for joining me on this show. Um, City Band, Missoula City Band concert series is happening all summer long. If you miss it, you'll be able to watch it on MCAT pretty much starting September, October. We'll be running it on MCAT pretty early, maybe even earlier. Just look for it. Usually, we, uh, from what Lori's done in the past, it usually airs Tuesday nights and whatnot. So I'll have a little bit of teases for you guys coming those months as well. Um, so once again, if you want to go to the Missoula City Band concerts, 8 p.m. every single Wednesday. Fourth of July concert is at 9.30 p.m. at the Missoula County Fairgrounds. It's presented by the Southgate Mall. And they uh, basically uh, band, if you can play in the band, play Americana music starting at 9, be there at 9, music starts at 9.30, fireworks start um, launching at around um, 9.30, I believe. Uh, no, no, fireworks start at 10.30, so it's an hour concert followed by all the wonderful fireworks that you guys can enjoy for the 4th of July. And also be aware, since because it is the 4th of July next Tuesday within the city limits, um, unless you have permits to launch uh, commercial type fireworks or professional fireworks, then you're not allowed to fire fireworks off in the city limits. And uh, a lot of times this is the worst time for dogs, veterans with PTSD who, uh, di uh, who are recovering from um, being in war. So be aware, just be a little respectful for your veterans who uh, might have um, PTSD and uh, fireworks loud sounds could send them into uh, uh, I, I don't know what it's called, but it's uh, just just be aware of that. But also, pets they can't stand fireworks. Uh, my my sister's dogs have also ran. Uh, my sister's dogs have basically ran away because of the loud noise of fireworks. But also, if you can't help it, and if you do live in county areas, be aware that um, it, you p bring your pets inside for that night. Um, even if it's just for one night, just make sure that um, otherwise they will run away. So just uh, just you know, stay ahead of it you know, plan for the worst, basically. So, um, 4th of July is happening. Um, have a lot of fun. Be safe. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Um, please join us tonight at 5 p.m. with a bunch of the kids presenting a whole bunch of videos. Um, and thanks for joining me. Mm -hmm.